I have a, a couple of questions in the pipeline. One uh, from uh, Ruth Martinson uh, asking, uh, well, saying, you, you say that households and firms have different inflation expectations. Is there also a difference in inflation expectations between, between northern and southern countries or eastern and western regions, for example, in the EU? The reason for this question is that there seems to be a difference in attitude, no? depending on, uh, on the ge geographical and socioeconomic background. Yes, there is a difference. And again, this is why it's important to have a survey which is run by the ECB to have a consistent measurement of inflation expectations. Um, for example, in, in Germany, people tend to be more informed about inflation and they have inflation expectations closer to the ECB inflation target than in other countries. Um, now, why is this happening? It, it's a good question. We, we can do more research there. And again, this is one reason why we need more investment into infrastructure here. Build surveys, run randomized control trials and, and see what people respond to. We can have different messages for Italy uh, and have different messages for Germany to manage expectations and, and have them under control. Okay, so let me let me take another one. Uh, Roberto Motto asking, can it be that uh, households and firms do not respond to uh, policy announcements, but they respond to practical implication of the policy decisions, for example, the mortgage rate, um, sorry, the mortgage rate, um, Mm -hmm. uh, that they face uh, is lower after an expansionary monetary policy. So the response found in macro models may be right after all. Yes, it's a great question. Uh, and um, Dimitris, Dimitris Gergarakos, uh, Oliko Bjorn, Michael Weber and I have a paper where we inform people about recent inflation numbers, also about mortgage rates. And we see that the mortgage rates generate the biggest responses uh, on the part of households. But what is surprising is that most people are, are still relatively uninformed about mortgage rates. And you know, mortgage rates are not directly controlled by, by the central bank. Uh, so one implication of our research was that, you know, when we deal with policy communication, telling people about the policy rate, you know, for example, Fed fund rate in the US is not particularly helpful for households because that's not the rate that they face. If the Fed can say something specifically about their objectives for the mortgage rates, that's going to be more effective. And so, you know, it's true our models may be right in the end, but, you know, the transmission mechanism is different. So a related question uh, from uh, Matthias Farkas. Uh, would this mean, so what, what, what uh, Roberto me, uh, asked for, uh, would this mean that asset prices are more relevant for households because they are more volatile than consumer prices? What is the relationship between SPF and households? Can we think of SPS expectations as an anchor to household expectation? How about the term structure of household inflation expectations? Well, many, many questions. Okay, let me start backwards. Uh, the term structure for households is typically suggesting that they think inflation is extremely persistent. So if you ask me what inflation is going to be next year and I tell you 5%, and then you ask me how much inflation I expect over the next 10 years per year, I will also tell you 5%. Okay, so it's kind of very peculiar inflation structure. There is very little mean reversion. And in contrast, professional forecasters don't take inflation as highly persistent. It's number one. Can professional forecasters uh, work as anchors? Yes, they can. Uh, there is this very influential paper by Chris Carroll where he, is, he has an epidemiological model of uh, information transmission that people gradually learn about um, you know, forecasts and macroeconomic conditions in the economy from professional forecasters. And um, you know this channel is operational, but again, it, it's it's relatively slow. It takes time for people to absorb this information. And uh, and so I guess you know the the evidence I see in the data suggests that there are this information rigidities, information frictions, they create these departures between professional forecasters and households, and it should be incorporated in our models. And, and finally, you know, the stock market when, and, uh, you know, households who have stocks and hold bonds, uh, they tend to be much more informed, you know, in part it's because 
they have higher education, they have higher wealth, they have higher stakes in, in tracking this information. But um, in the US, the fraction, for example, of households who hold stocks is, is very small. And um, as a result, you know, this is a force, but it's not a very strong force. Okay, let, let me let me ask you one question on my my own. Um, I remember reading your paper, the, the paper you wrote with co-authors um, on um, adjustments in inflation expectations for a control group around you know, the Jay Powell speech, uh, Jackson Jackson Hole speech last year, where he, uh, he announced you know, the results of the uh, Fed strategy review, and I remember um, that. Uh, I thought the conclusion one could distill from that that paper, disheartening as it, as it was, was more or less the following: when when central banks speak, uh, the broad public doesn't listen. When it does listen, it doesn't understand. When it does understand, it doesn't agree. So would would you would you agree with this? And uh, if you do agree, um, do you, do you think the last thing so that they don't agree with what we say? So central banks say is due to the fact that they have a supply side uh, store in mind for inflation. I think it was a very good summary of what we found. <laughs> I tend to be an optimist and, you know, being a, a university professor, I believe in education. So we can certainly over time uh, educate people and explain to them the benefits of average inflation targeting and people will learn eventually. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, uh, how much time it will take, I don't know, but again, uh, with with some luck and, and effort, we should be able to overturn this mindset. Okay, I don't see, I don't see more questions coming, so um, for, thank you very much, uh, Yuri, it's a, again, a very, very good presentation. Um, and uh, I must say, this brings us to the end of the conference. Uh, let me express our heartfelt gratitude, uh, particularly for all the pa panelists and presenters for you know, giving us so much insight in, uh, into issues that are very relevant for central banks and with which we all grapple every day, uh, but also all participants you know, who asked questions and, and made the debate so lively. So we hope uh, to see you uh, next year at our next um, monetary policy conference, hopefully in, uh, in, uh, in person. So great day um, to everybody uh, or great evening and see you soon. Bye-bye.